It is Thursday, February 1st, 2024. This is a special breaking news edition of baseball today. That is not my man, Trevor Plouffe. That is the man, Jolly Olive. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well as we are recording this on a Thursday night. And we're both wearing birds caps. <laughs> Yours looks like it's been through the ringer a little bit more than mine. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you called this baseball today. It's baseball tonight, Chris oh, well, Rose. We're going no, no, no. late It's night. not baseball tonight. We can't say that. Can't, can't say baseball tonight. Copyright it is baseball <laughs> today because tonight is still today. There's a reason we did nice this. Nice spin. Nice spin. Because uh, we had a huge monumental trade that happened two weeks before the start of spring training is Corbin Burns, the free agent to be as a brand new home. He is off from the only home he is known in Milwaukee in a three for one trade. That's two players and a draft pick DL Hall, the left-hander former first round pick heads to Milwaukee along with middle infielder, Joey Ortiz plus the 34th pick in the 2024 draft. How shocked are you that this happened two weeks before spring training? You know, if you told me a month ago that Corbin Burns is getting traded, I think I would have believed you. But then the thing that kind of shocks me about this is that the Brewers just spent some decent money on mm -hmm. Reese Hoskins. And I was like, oh, OK, let's do one more push. Like, let's keep Peralta. Let's keep Burns. Let's get another wild card spot, win the Central. And then they take the deal from the Orioles. And it's a lot of people are reacting in a kind of a similar way. Is this a fleece? Did the Brewers get enough for one year of a recent Cy Young winner? Either way, whatever you think of the deal, it's a really exciting time to be an Orioles fan. Outside of new ownership and them staying at Camden Yards, this is the move we've been asking them to make for a while now, since they started to show signs of life in 2022. We've been asking them to get an ace. Now they have one. The biggest thing for me is like, okay, now we get an extension done. Now we keep him here, but that's the next step. Well, he is a Scott Boris client. So when right. you're this close to free agency and you haven't even hit 30, my guess is, is that he's going to test those waters unless he just gets mm. some sort of enormous deal. Um, Orioles fans, what a 24 hours for you, right? First of all, <laughs> you're finding out that the Angelos family is eventually going to sell its uh, part of the team to a pair of billionaires who are like, yeah, let's go get it. And by, by the way, we're going to bring back the most famous Oriole of all time, Cal Ripken Jr., to be the face of that ownership group moving forward. I don't know how many pennies he's got in this thing, but at least he's going to be the Iron Man face of it. And that's a great deal. As far as what it means for the Orioles, for the last 18 months, since we knew that the Orioles were really kind of arrived, right? They surprised us in 2022. And then they took the world by storm, went in 100 games a season ago. And they've got all this young talent. I was like, why don't we go get somebody? Last offseason, I wanted them to go get Carlos Rodon. That mm. didn't work out. And then when this offseason came, I was like, well, go get Blake Snell. Go get Jordan Montgomery. Go get somebody who can really help you be the front line of that young rotation and teach everybody how to be the dudes. Like, they, they brought in... Kyle Gibson last year, who I thought really did his job and played it well. For sure. But Kyle, you know, as much as we like Kyle Gibson, he's a middle of the rotation guy, not a high end of the rotation guy. So now they've got that dude. My question is, does this now make them the favorite in the AL East or were they already the favorites in your eyes? I don't know if they were already the favorite. The AL East is really, in my opinion, the hardest division to predict year in and year out because it always seems like some team comes out as the powerhouse, even though there's a lot of competition. But this is as clear cut of a favorite as I've seen from that division in a while. You're coming off in a 100-win year when a lot of those guys, you were powered by your offense, a lot of those guys were just getting their feet under them. You know, This is really the, the beginnings of Adley Rushman and Gunnar Henderson and all those guys that follow in that category. And now you add established pitching talent, which is the one thing we've been asking Baltimore to establish on their team for the past few years now. I was trying to sell myself as like, yeah, Kyle Bradish could be a one. He finished fourth in Cy Young voting. Mm -hmm. He was great the entire season. Tyler Wells was leading the league in whip for a long time. John Means has been very good in the past. He can be good again. But when you put Corbin Burns on top of all that and all of them move down one spot, that sells me. You add in the bullpen, which was already fantastic with Craig Kimbrell in there now, which happened early on. I think people are forgetting about it. Mm -hmm. This is suddenly 
a strong suit of the Baltimore Orioles. I don't think it's their crutch anymore. I think it's a strong suit. Their pitching staff, top to bottom now, that one through five of Burns, Bradish, Grayson Rodriguez, who I don't think we've seen the best of yet by no. any means, no. John Means, and then some combination of Dean Kramer and Tyler Wells. Suddenly, it looks like the Orioles just have a heaping plethora of starting pitching talent and depth. And who knows? They could not be done yet. This is day two of new ownership or you know, new ownership hanging over. So it's really, really exciting for the Baltimore Orioles. And by proxy, they give up two players and a draft pick to get it done. It doesn't seem like that much in the grand scheme. Yeah, I'm not going to – I can't stand it when people grade trades 20 minutes after too they early. happen. too right. You cannot do that, right? In 19 – I'll take you back 35-plus years in 1987 when the um, Tigers and Braves pulled off a one-for-one one swap when Doyle, Doyle Alexander, Alexander – yeah. yeah, he goes He goes to Detroit. He. I don't think he lost a game or maybe lost one game in the regular season – and the Braves got a 20-year-old double-A pitcher who ended up going to Cooperstown mm-hmm. as, as you know the best starter-reliever combo maybe we've ever seen. Sorry, Dennis Eckersley, but John wow. Smoltz is a better starting pitcher <laughs> than you. Shots fired. You know, I'm just saying. I know. Come on. But that's my point, is that you just – I'm not going to sit here and grade the trade yet. But with the Orioles, I am curious to see one of two things. Does this mean they keep pushing – Right, they're not going to have Felix Bautista this year. Right, so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of that bullpen works its way out throughout the season. Do they keep trading because they've got so many young guys who are still in that top 100 of you know MLB's best prospects? They still have guys they didn't touch the guy like DL Hall. We've heard about for years, right? But DL Hall all of a sudden becomes expendable. Right, we don't necessarily have a spot for him. He could be a nice piece out of the bullpen. If that's the way you want to go, but you got to give up something to go get a guy like Corbin Burns, who has led the National League in strikeouts total the last three years. So I wonder if this is just the start of it. It could be. I mean, Joey Ortiz is no small prospect. He's number six in their system. He's a top 100 guy. He's just another infielder. And the Orioles have so many of these infield prospects that like he yeah, he was expendable at the end of the day. And D.L. Hall, I thought the Orioles management, you know, they did this to perfection because D.L. Hall was kind of looked at as like a lost project, something I hate using the word bust, but he fell in that category. Last year was the first productive year of his career. Mm -hmm. He kind of recouped a little bit of value. As soon as they were able to get a little bit of value out of him, they traded him. So who knows what the Brewers can get? Because you see the Brewers all the time enriching pitching talent basically out of nowhere. I'm sure they'll be able to do it again with him. And then a draft pick is a draft pick. It could be anything. It could be Corbin Burns. Burns, who knows? Uh, but at the end of the day, you are trading one year. It is just one year. It's technically a yeah. rental, but it's Corbin Burns. It's a guy that we thought might have got traded last year. It's a guy that's gotten top eight Cy Young the past four years, including winning it in 2021. And I know that last year was, quote unquote, a, a step back for him. But when your step back is still a 127 ERA plus leading the league in whip, like, this is the real deal, man. This is the first time the Orioles have had a true frontline ace in the past 10 years. Like, I'm trying to think back to those playoff teams who was getting the game one ball for them. Like, this is the real deal. This is like Mike Musina territory for them. If I'm an Orioles fan, I'm ecstatic. Oh, yeah. I, and as I said, I think it's really just the beginning. And what a breath of fresh air for these Orioles fans over the last 24 hours between ownership and now Mike Elias pulling the trigger on one of the bigger deals we've seen this offseason. We started the show where you mentioned a little bit about what this means for Milwaukee, but let's right. take kind of a, a now a 30,000 bird's eye view of this. Um, do you think Brewers fans are confused? I Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my initial reaction because as I alluded to before, it was like, well, are the Brewers like dipping their toe in? Are they not fully giving up? Do they want to see where they are mid-season and then evaluate from there and possibly work through extensions? And I think the answer we got was something that you mentioned before is that Burns is a Boris client and perhaps they they tried in their own Brewers way to get something done. And they kind of saw the writing on the wall that this guy's not going to be sticking around in Milwaukee. And they are a little bit like your team in Cleveland where, you know, in the past they've demonstrated a good ability to know when to trade starting pitching talent and 
and you know just town in general and continue replenishing their farm system to stay consistent and stay in wild card and division races despite their lower budget but now you go into this season uh and you're looking at freddie peralta as your one which mm -hmm. you can work with wade miley as your two which you know wade miley probably still has a few more good years in him because he's wade miley And right. then Colin Ray, Joe Rawson, D.L. Hall is going to be their number five starter. Shout out to Fangraphs. They already updated their roster resource. Nice. And then you talk about the Brewers lineup, which you could do day in and day out with what are you going to get out of Jackson Trio? And Garrett Mitchell was good right. before he got hurt. It's a lot in the air. So if I'm a Brewers fan, I'm not fully disengaged on 2024 yet. And I don't think this trade is inherently bad by any means. But yeah, it's kind of a signal to the fans that like, Change is coming. This roster is going to be turning over. The prospects are going to be getting a look, and we're entering kind of a new era of Brewers baseball. I think what it allows them to do is go either way in 2024. I think if it all goes amazingly well and D.L. Hall ends up being the dude that the Orioles thought he was going to be when they drafted him in the first round of 2017, well, now all of a sudden the drop-off from Corbin Burns to D.L. Hall isn't 50%. It's 18%. You sure. know what I'm saying? Like, that's if it works out perfectly. And Joey Ortiz, I don't know exactly where they're going to have him slotted in, but they're going to have him somewhere. If it goes wrong, well, now all of a sudden, we've got a bunch of interesting pieces that could be traded. And yeah. maybe we turn this franchise around rather quickly, right? And you build it around uh, Churio. And yeah. that's the way. And so I think it actually has given them some degree of flexibility. And on top of that, now you're not going into spring training where you have to answer the questions, where Corbin Burns, who's done it beautifully throughout his career for the most part, handling everything. Even at a time where, remember, I think it was last year, where there was an arbitration case, and I think he lost it, and it was only a couple hundred thousand right, dollars. Right. And he was upset with it, and he said, maybe this is the way they look at me in this organization. You know, whatever it was, I, but I didn't think it, it was mean-spirited, and I don't didn't think it was overly awkward. I really think that he's handled himself really well up there in Milwaukee. But now they don't have to answer that. You know, yeah. they've got a new manager in place. It just feels like everything is new here for the Brewers moving forward. Yeah, I mean, it, it did make me think of that arbitration hearing from last year, which was something of a spring training storyline. And that kind of thing, it looms over not only the player and ownership, but the clubhouse, too, especially when it's a guy at the forefront of the clubhouse, a leader on the team. And there are still pieces on this Brewers team that get me excited, man. We just did the catcher's tier list over on Wake and Jake, and I got to spend 10 minutes talking about how great William Contreras is. Mm -hmm. They have one of the best catchers in baseball. Not many teams can say they have that on their roster. Joey Ortiz is a guy that had a 900 OPS at AAA just last year. Like It looks like he's primed and ready to join the Brewers immediately. So they're essentially getting major league talent in this deal in return, and it could pan out in a massive way. So... In a sense, it was kind of a necessary step for both sides. If you're the Brewers, you could have waited until midseason, but if Burns takes another step back for whatever reason, and now you're only dealing him for two months of Corbin Burns, you're potentially leaving a deal like this out on the table. And if you're the Orioles, you know the AL East is going to be with potent competition between the Blue Jays, the Rays, and the Yankees. And who knows? Last year might have not been the truth. Maybe this year you have less luck on your side, less magic in your season. You need every advantage you can get. And having a number one, an established number one that all of your rivals have will be a chance to match their competitive edge and give yourself a chance in a full 162 to possibly win 100 games again. I do think it's really impressive they were able to come out with 100 wins last season considering just how young and inexperienced that roster totally. was. And I think we saw it on full display in the ALDS against the Rangers. Now you give yourself a little bit of that edge, a little bit of that experience. Who knows? It could be the difference in winning a playoff series, winning a World Series, or it could not move the needle at all. But at the same time, it's a headline-grabbing move, and the Orioles don't get a ton of those. And that's why it really excites me. And here's the big thing. They still have more prospects. I, I scream it at least once a month. Prospects aren't there just to end up being in your stadium. Right. It could be the trigger to pulling off a major trade. And that's something because of the depth that they have in their farm system, they were able to get rid of two guys whom they really believed in at one point or another and not blink. And if they're falling short somewhere, whether that's in the bullpen or in the rotation because of injuries or inconsistency or both, 
they can still go out and pull the trigger if they need to in July. And they are in a perfect position. Let's leave you with this. Do you think that the Orioles now firing their shot has put more pressure on Toronto, the Yankees, or less likely Tampa because it's not in their DNA to do something big before well, spring training or at least good, the season? It's a really good question, Rosie, because the top two free agents out there are starting pitchers. And I'd argue that the Orioles just got a starting pitcher that is better than both of them. But getting either of those guys on your roster still kind of matches that tone, right? And I, you're right. I don't see it in the card for the Rays. Uh, but if you're a team like the Yankees, who had already been rumored and linked to Blake Snell and kind of view their rotation as something of a wild card, maybe that's a move you make. If you're the Blue Jays, you brought in some bats, you brought in Justin Turner, but like, you can always bring in more. Jorge Soler is still out there. You got room in your lineup. Maybe you go add more. I think the pressure is on now. And I think the easiest way to see it is go on your Twitter feed right now if you're a John Boy Media fan and go listen to Jimmy, Jake, Joseph's reaction. There is nervousness in those tones, man, because they know what this move means. They know that the Orioles are prepared to enter a new era and they have the chance to go full Death Star with moves just like this. They don't necessarily need the money to pull off moves like this because, like you said, they have endless ammunition in that farm system. They can keep dipping their hand in there and seeing what they can find. So it's it's a really exciting time to be a baseball fan if you're not an AL East fan. Because if you're an AL East fan, I'd be really, really nervous looking at this Orioles roster and how long their window might be. I appreciate you taking the late call. On a Thursday night, but this That's is what fun. we do. We Hell live yeah. for some breaking news here at John Boy Media. So for our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and the MVP of John Boy Media in my on. eyes, one Jolly Olive, I am Chris Rose. We will see you Monday on Baseball Today, unless there's another trade. <laughs>